When I was a brand new author, I was given some terrible advice. And today we're gonna break down five of those things so that you as a new writer or an aspiring author do not fall into some of these traps. So if you're just jumping in and joining me, let me know where you're joining me from and let's talk about some really bad advice that I was given as a brand new author. Now, you know, I am a multi-time best-selling author. I've been in the business for quite a few years at this point. We have well over two dozen books out in the world. So I have seen a lot of really bad advice over the years. I have learned from this. I've accepted some of this bad advice and had to fail. And I rejected some of this advice and I succeeded despite people trying to give me bad advice. And some of these people gave me bad advice intentionally and some did not give give it to me intentionally. So let's break down five of those ways that I was given bad advice as a brand new author in the industry. So I am going to pull this up for you. There we go. They've redone how we do this on Instagram. So I got to work my assets here. The first thing that I heard was that I needed to space out my releases by many, many months. I shouldn't be publishing back to back to back. And this is terrible, terrible terrible advice because you do not make money in this industry until you have a big backlist or until you do a lot, a lot of work. Your very first novel is really not going to make you money. You're not going to be able to grow as an author. You're not going to be getting a lot of followers and fans and you're not going to be known. You're not going to be able to get reviews. It's a very big struggle as a new author. And so if you rely on just that first book for a very long time, you're going to be waiting even longer to make the fans and to make the money. There are a few rare exceptions and it usually sways toward the traditionally published side who already has thousands of dollars to market a book. So unless you've got thousands of dollars to market a book, having a really slow release schedule is not going to help you grow in this industry, traditionally published or indie published. So do not space out your books. If you have the ability to write faster, write faster and publish faster. In fact, if you can publish a book a month, you're going to be doing way, way better than somebody who's publishing every six months or somebody who's publishing every year or somebody who's publishing every two years. So the faster you can write and get your books out there, the better you can market, the more you can grow and the more money you can make, which will allow you to stay in this industry. If you have questions on advice you've heard, go ahead and drop those down below. We're going to continue on with some really bad advice that I was given when I was a brand new author. There we go go. Um, the next one is that I would make a few hundred dollars every single month right off the bat. So the gal who was trying to pull me into the publishing industry told me a lot of not truths back in the day. And I very much accepted her word for a long time. And she had told me that she, with one book out, only selling a handful of copies a month was making a couple hundred dollars. This is just false. We know that most authors make maybe a dollar or two off their books, sometimes as low as 33 cents off of every book sale. And so you are not going to be making a lot of money right off the bat, especially if you only have one book out, which goes back to our first problem. You should be releasing as quickly as possible to build up your platform so that you can grow and make that money. You are not going to make a lot of money right away. It's going to be a long process. You're going to have to get a lot of backlist out. You're going to have to have a lot of options for people and you're going to have to do a lot of marketing, both paid and organic marketing. My goodness, I'm sorry about this chair squeaking. Man, I don't know what to do about this chair, but you want to make sure that you're aware that you're not going to make money right off the bat. So you do have to invest into marketing. You have to invest into your editing and your publishing and your covers and your formatting and like all of these things, whether you're traditionally or indie published, you are still paying for things. So don't be under the impression you're going to be making a lot of money right away. It's simply not going to happen again, unless you are with one of the big five publishers and they signed you with a huge signing bonus. That early advance is really, really big. Otherwise, you're not going to be making a lot of money, especially right off the bat in this industry. Go ahead and drop your questions about advice you've heard in this publishing industry. I want to make sure that we are getting those questions answered for you as we are here hanging out today. The third piece of advice was, yes, that publisher is safe to work with. And I want to tell you a little bit of a story. You all know I got a lot of contracts offered to me right off the bat when I was in this publishing industry. I turned them all down and for a year I did nothing with my book until I found the right fit for me. I then had to make sure I was researching before I was working with other publishers as I was going through this whole process. Part of that is to go to other authors who work with these publishers and ask how their experience has been. 
What I learned very quickly is that these authors will lie in a lot of cases because they have NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, where they're not allowed to talk about it. Now, if your publisher has an NDA, that's really shady. That's a red flag. You should run. Not all publishers have these. You're not allowed to say proprietary information. So like internal secrets, you're not allowed to talk about, but you should be able to talk about your experience. If there's ever an NDA as part of your contract, that's terrifying. It's a red flag and you need to run. But people will also be very nervous about their careers. If they're locked into a contract, and remember most book contracts are five years long, if they're locked into it and it's not a good environment, they're gonna be very nervous to say anything negative about that person or about that company. For me, I had a company I really wanted to work with. I checked with my author friends and they said, yeah, it's good. And then I went and I got on a phone call with this publisher. The publisher proceeded to trash her husband who was outside mowing. She took the phone call while she was running on the treadmill because that's how important I was to her. She bashed her authors. She said some really awful things. It was a lot of red flags. And I did check with my publishing lawyer without signing anything. I made sure like this really is a bad idea, right? And she confirmed bad idea. Turns out not too long later, I then heard from this author and my other author friends with this publisher. This publisher had been bullying their authors. They'd been stealing from their authors. To this day, this publisher is in existence and is taking on new authors. They are using the money they stole from the other authors to pay their legal fees. And no, that was incorrect. They are, they are paying off the authors that they stole from with the new authors that they're bringing into their publishing house right now. It's still in existence. So a lot of really bad things came out. They dropped a ton of authors because they got caught. They said, okay, we're done, we're cutting ties. They kicked out 90% of their authors and just said, goodbye, you're done. And they then had to fight all these legal battles there, which they're still into today. And I heard from these people saying, we, we couldn't tell you the truth. We couldn't tell you what it really was like because we were afraid. If you spoke out about her in any way, shape, or form, you would not only be bullied, but you would be publicly harassed. She threatened their careers to destroy them, all of these things. So yes, it's really important to be checking with the authors who work with these publishers, but don't take their word for it because in a lot of cases, they can't tell you the truth because they're afraid or because there's an NDA. Sometimes they will be able to, but like I've even had good friends of mine tell other people, their friends, that it was okay to work with publishers. I know because I've been connected with them was not a good situation. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So just because somebody says, yeah, the experience with that publisher is good doesn't mean that that's true. Go ahead and drop your questions down below. We're gonna get them answered in just a minute. I wanna get through the last couple of things that I was told as a brand new author that you really need to be paying attention to. Um, is this my last one? It might be, I'm not sure what number I'm on. Another thing that I heard though, was that it should take you months to write your stories. I have had so many authors jump into this industry just because they're not capable of doing something, saying that you're not capable of doing something. They say that it should take you a couple of months to write a book or a year to write a book when in reality, people who are really good in this industry, who have trained themselves and disciplined themselves and have the skills and abilities can write a full length novel in two weeks and have it fully self-edited and off to their professional editor ready for publication within two weeks. So there's going to be a difference in how people are writing. Some will write fast, some will write slow. Your book should not take more than a couple of months to write. If that's the case, you're probably doing something wrong for you and you should change the way that you're working or you should change the projects that you're working on. If it's taking more than a couple of months, that's a problem. But that's something you need to look into for you. But if you write really fast, if you write a book in two months, or if you write a book in three months, or if you write a book in two weeks, there's nothing wrong with that. So people who give you that advice are bitter because they can't do it. And I've seen a lot of people try to cancel me and destroy me and others like me for writing faster than them. I've seen people try to go after editors because they got work done really quickly where their editor would take months to do anything. So you're gonna get a lot of really bad advice on that front and you just have to kind of keep that in mind. Your pace can be different than other people's paces. If you've got questions on bad advice or potentially bad advice in this industry, drop it down below. Um, we're going to get that answered for you in just a second. And I appreciate all of you joining me for today's conversation. Oh, one more. For today's conversation, that's a little bit later than usual because construction's going on here. So we're here an hour later today. 
The last really big thing that I heard as a new author was that you don't need a website and you don't need a newsletter. And this is so freaking false. You absolutely have to have a website. It is 2021, people. If you are professional in any way, shape, or form, you have to have a website. If you don't, you are not a professional, period. You have to have that home base. This is like your business card. This is your handshake to the world. This is how you're presenting yourself. Your social media doesn't count for any of this, period. Just because you have social media platforms doesn't mean anything. You have to have a website. And again, it's 2021. Do you know how, how easy it is to make a website? They have drag and drop templates now. They're really cheap to access. Or you can hire somebody to create a website for you. It's so easy and accessible and cost effective. Like it's not even expensive to get a website these days and maintain it on a monthly basis. So you can absolutely get one um, as you are jumping into this industry and you should have one by the time your first book comes out. If you don't, there's definitely a problem. Make sure you have that website. But the second part of this is the newsletter. So with newsletters, you have to make sure that you have a newsletter that you should be sending out no less than once a month, but better once a week. This is because social media doesn't cut it. We just talked about this. Social media doesn't cut it because you don't own social media. If you're posting on Instagram, if you're posting on TikTok, that's great. Build up your following. It's a great way to communicate with people. But what happens if something goes wrong? Let me tell you a story. Back in my first year as an author, I had someone ask me for a free book and I said no because we were not doing that. We're not giving people free books. This is an industry, okay? We're being professional about this. They wanted me to send them a free book and I said no. Because I said no, they tried to get me kicked off of Facebook. They went and reported my Facebook page while I was in the middle of a live stream for being whatever it was that they had reported and Facebook took down my page. It was like a three day struggle. I had to prove to them I didn't do anything wrong. They did acknowledge I did nothing wrong and they restored my page. But for three days I had no access to those people who were hanging out on my Facebook page. At any given time, TikTok can be banned. Instagram can shut down. The algorithms can change and prevent people from seeing the content that you're posting. You have no accessibility to your fans via your social media. But your newsletter, this is 100% owned by you. You have those contacts. The only way people can miss your posts or your emails is if they actively delete that email from their inbox. It's not like accidentally missing an Instagram post. They will always see your content unless they choose not to. You will always have access to them, even if Instagram shuts down, even if TikTok gets banned, even if YouTube is no longer accessible to people without paying or without whatever, you will always have access to your newsletter people and be able to deliver the content and the conversations that you need to through your newsletter. So you absolutely have to have a website and you have to have a newsletter by the time your first book comes out, period, no excuses. There's very, very little cost to it. It is cheap and easy to do. It's incredibly accessible to everybody. So it is 100% something that you have to have done when you are becoming an author. All right, let me get into your questions as I knock my plant beside me. And we are gonna get your questions answered on this for the next couple of minutes before we sign off. Uh, today's going to be a busy, busy day. We got people coming over. We got some things we gotta pick up. So we're doing all the fun things. All right, scrolling up. Hey and hello. Hi and welcome. I love binge reading series. Girl, me too. Uh, how did you market your first book? I built up a platform around books and around reading. When I built up this platform, I became a trusted source of information. I made a lot of really cool author friends, like all the things. So I was very known in the industry before I dropped my first book. And then I was able to market through social media, through my live streams, through my different presentations. I ran a lot of events, a lot of launch parties. I was helping other authors out marketing, all the good, fabulous, wonderful things. So I very strongly built up my platform first, not, not in a look at me way. I didn't even tell people I had a book until the book was out. But I built up my standing in the industry, became a trusted source of information, and then presented them with my book, at which point it went really well. Uh, how do you know a publisher is safe to work with? You have to do your research. There are like different writer boards where people tell you about red flags and bad things. You absolutely have to, without exception, get a publishing lawyer to read your contract before you sign it. They will be the only person, period, who is looking out for you. Your agent has skin in the game. Your publisher has skin in the game. While they may be kind of looking out for you, they're in it for themselves. Your agent is here to make money off of you. You are only 
only taken care of by your publishing lawyer. They are looking for red flags, clauses that need to be taken out, things that need to be added in. And because they have so many clients in this industry, they have seen the horror stories. They know what's going on. So they may not be able to tell you that a publisher is stealing from their clients, but they know and they can say, we don't think you should sign this because of some of our other clients. And that's exactly what happened to me. My publishing lawyer knew what was going on. She couldn't tell me because of client privilege, but she did look at me and say, no, do not do this. This is not a good choice. And she protected me from that. Now, granted, I knew it was a bad choice via my phone call with that publisher crazy times, but she for sure protected me. So always have a publishing lawyer check over your contract and make sure that they look over what's going on with this publisher. Because again, the publisher's lawyer is there to protect the publisher and make the publisher more money and get more rights for the publisher, not for you. They are rights grabbing. They are taking things that could be and should be yours. So you have to make sure that you've got someone on your side legally protecting you and an agent is not that. Uh, the publisher sounds awful. Yes, they are a very horrible publisher and a lot of, especially small and medium sized presses are coming out with these horror stories at this point. So you have to do your research. I, as a published author, both traditionally and indie published, am saying at this point, do not sign with a publisher, period, unless it's one of the big five publishers and you are their favorite. Because I have people with the big five publishers who are responsible for selling thousands of copies of their book on their own because they're not the favorite. It's, it's not a great situation. So unless you're the favorite and you're in the big five, don't do it. It's not worth it. You're going to make way more money, get way more fans, and grow way better in this industry if you go indie. Hey, hey, hello and welcome. Any final questions? Now is the time to drop those down for me. Um, I see a couple more that we're going to get to answer, but this is your chance. This is your time. Talk to me about advice in this publishing industry that you want to check and see if it's good advice or bad advice. Now is your chance. How do you get past writer's block? I got tons and tons of videos on this. Check out the YouTube page, but um, it really comes down to discipline. You have to discipline yourself to be able to work. Just like with any job, you don't get to go to your work and say, oh no, I don't feel like doing this today. Oh no, I'm tired. Oh no, I don't wanna do this today. My brain's not working today. You don't get to do that. And writing is the same. If this is a job for you, if this is going to be a job for you, you have to discipline yourself and train yourself to do it anyway. So professional authors can always sit down and write their stories no excuses. So with this, you need to train yourself to do it. You have to write even if it's bad. Always, always, always write even if it's bad. If you Even if you can't write inside of your story, write something else. If it sucks, that's okay. You can refine it later, but make sure you're training yourself to write despite any blocks that you might have, and then you can fix it on the back end. Once you start to train your body and your mind to do it anyway, you're going to get better at doing it inside of the context of your stories, and then you're not going to have to struggle with it moving forward. Now, you do have the ability to kind of step back as well. So if it's just like a little temporary block, maybe you need to take a break. Go check the mail. Go get a snack. Come back, see if you got this. If not, maybe you need to take the day off. Maybe you need to go take a day off and then come back to the project. Maybe you need to go do something else creative. So stay in that creative mindset, but go do something creative like a photo walk or go to a poetry class or go take a pottery class. Do something that's creative that keeps your mind engaged, but is not necessarily your story. The other problem is if you are struggling with your story, it might be the wrong story for you at the wrong time. It's okay to shell the story that's not working. You can come back to that later and try something else. Just because you start a project doesn't mean you have to finish it. It does mean that you have to progress forward in your career, whatever that means. So discipline yourself, train yourself to write. Even when you don't wanna write, you have to level up. This is a mental game for you and you have to do it just like you have to do any job that you are are working and if you don't that's on you people can use the excuse of writer writer's block and sometimes you will have a minute where you like have something you have to work out so I don't get writer's block because I've disciplined myself to not get writer's block but every once in a while I'll hit a little bit of a wall with a story and I'm gonna need to take a second and figure out what the issue is and fix it that doesn't mean I'm stopping my work it does mean that I'm pausing to figure out those little details it might mean some research it might mean that I need to try something and then try something differently it might need mean I need to pivot a little bit it could even mean that there is a block, there is something I haven't figured out yet. Maybe I just need to skip this little section and move on to the next section and come back to it. So there's a lot of different things that you can implement here, but it basically boils down to writer's block is something that you can train yourself not to get. 
and you can discipline yourself to not have writer's block. And then when you do have those like little walls that you hit, there are other creative things that you can do to get yourself back into that state. And again, remember, if it's not the right project for you right now, it's going to be hard for you to write. Shelve it and do something else right now. Uh, what needs to be on your website? I have a full course on this. You can actually go over to kmrobinson.com and I've got a full course on how to build your own website without coding, start to finish, everything you need on it. There's a ton of really good information in it. It's for entrepreneurs, but it 100% counts for authors as well. And then you just, um, where the product stuff is, you just put your book stuff in. So there's a lot of cool stuff there. And I've actually taught courses on how to do this for authors as well to make sure you've got all the correct bookish things and like the bonus things and all the extras there. So you can check all that out over at camrobinson.com and I'm sure there's probably lingering things on readingtransforms.com as well. Uh, as we wrap up today, we've got what is the best advice that you have gotten as an author? Whew, let me see. What's the best advice? Um, the best advice that I've received as an author is that it is okay to write quickly. It's, I, and I, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the bad advice about having to space things out and to go slow and to slow down and to slow your shine or dull your shine. Do not listen to this other really bad advice. You write at your own pace and you work to get better every single day. For me, I can write really fast. So I do write really fast and I put out content really quickly to the point where I actually have to slow myself down and not put it out as quickly because the fans can't keep up with me. So in that front, like don't burn out your fans, but it's okay to write quickly. And it was something that I had to learn the hard way and it cost me money. I had to learn the hard way and I didn't make the sales that I could have made because I listened to bad advice. So it's okay to write quickly. It's okay to do things quickly and it's okay not to listen to people who are going to try to berate you for doing things differently than them. Um, and I, I'm, I know there's tons of other advice that I'm not thinking of right now. There's like a lot of things that I can think of. Um, people, people on covers sell better than objects. So if you were trying to make money, especially in the indie space, always, always, always have a pretty girl in a pretty dress that sells books. Trust me. Um, let's see. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot of advice. Well, maybe we'll do, um, somebody remind me, maybe next week we'll do the best advice I've been given as an author. So this week we did bad advice. Next week we'll do good advice. That'll be a fun twist on this. So join me next week. We're here every single Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, except for today, which is four because there's construction here. And we will be back next week with another Q&A. We're going to talk about the good advice that I've gotten as an author. And join me on Friday. This again is usually at 3 p.m. Eastern, but it will be at 4 p.m. Eastern on Friday on TikTok for an open Q&A. Ask me anything anything goes with that one and uh, we're gonna beat the construction and work around it in the afternoon it'll be lots of fun and we dropped some really cool content today so make sure you are checking that out as well y'all make sure you leave a comment on this video it's gonna be up in the next couple of minutes because the comments in the chat don't count for the comments in the comment section. So please make sure you leave a comment with your best takeaway from today's conversation. And I will see you again in the next video. P.S. Dropped a new YouTube video last night. Dropping a vlog tonight on the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash KM Robinson Books for more. Alright friends. I will see you during our next live stream. Until then I hope you have a great day and stay inspired.